Bono, he was deputy chief designer for Mr. Yakovlev, a famous uh, fighter designer. Uh, but uh, it, it was not enough for him. On his free time, if, if he had free time, he designed his own uh, construction. And one of uh, that was famous in future Antonov II by plane. This little plane, the Antonov II, displayed outside his Kiev office, is the one that eventually led him towards the heavy-duty cargo jets that bear his name today. Project was uh, supported by Mr. Yakovlev and by Ministry of Aviation Industry, and the first prototype was built in Kiev factory and uh, flew in 1946. Aircraft was good, successful, and the uh, government designed to to start big-scale production. Antonov established his own design bureau in Kiev. The objective was to construct a plane that could withstand the rigors of flight all over the vast Soviet Union, something that could dust crops in the Ukraine, as well as deliver mail to the frozen wastes of Siberia. 18,000 of these workhorses were built, and many still do their jobs today. Antonov's ability to design aircraft that perfectly fulfilled Soviet needs led to a friendship with Nikita Khrushchev and some status in the USSR. Not just anybody gets an office like this in the Soviet Union. Antonov's office is preserved like a shrine and is packed with vintage Cold War era trappings, secret recorders, complex communication systems, and hidden panels revealing low-tech tricks of the engineering trade all speak volumes about Oleg Antonov and his vital role in Soviet aviation. From this office, Antonov continued to design planes, and those planes kept getting bigger. Thanks to this man, the Ukraine holds the little-known distinction of consistently producing the biggest planes in the world. The world's first wide-bodied aircraft was developed here in 1965, the Antonov-22. To this day, the AN-22 remains the largest turboprop in the world. Approximately 100 of these massive military transport planes were produced. came the ironically named little brother to the biggest jet in the world. The Antonov 124. The 124 owes its whale-like form to its function. It was developed in the mid-70s as a strategic airlifter for the Soviet military to transport missiles and tanks. With its 240-foot wingspan and 227-foot length, it easily captures the record for the largest production aircraft in the world. Over 60 of these jets have been built. Oleg Antonov led the initial design work, and within the government, there were some conflicts of opinion on design. But Antonov prevailed. Notable features of his giant creation were thicker wings than its predecessors, providing more lift and fuel capacity. The aircraft had nose and tail cargo doors, allowing vehicles to drive in one side and out the other. The jet had the ability to kneel down on its undercarriage, making for easier front loading, and had its own internal crane to pick up cargo at the rear, carry it straight into the aircraft and position where desired. The 124 excelled at going where jets usually don't go, using its gigantic bank of landing gear to nimbly touch down anywhere it's needed, even on unpaved runways. The Antonov 124 is capable of landing successfully on primitive runways. 
It has even landed in the polar region on frozen airstrips when we used to transport supplies to that region. The first prototype flew in December 1982, and by 1984, the airliner was in production. The same year, her creator, Oleg Antonov, died at the age of 78. The desk calendar in his office still marks the time period. This pioneering aviator's presence still lingers in his untouched office, and it lingers in his massive aircraft as well. Because with the success of the AN-124, Antonov had planted the seeds for an even bigger jet. A jet that would shoulder the burden of the Soviet space program and their race with the United States to dominate space. One thing is certain. In the former Soviet Union, Bigger was always better. From colossal statues to humongous helicopters, largeness reigned supreme. The Cold War competition with the West was fierce, and Antonov's designers strived to outdo the Americans. I remember that all time we compete with the United States in transport aircraft. The United States built Hercules, we built Antonov 12, we built Antonov 22, United States built C5, we built Antonov 124, and after that we built just Antonov 225. And I don't know, maybe American United States don't need bigger plane, and they, they do not build anything more bigger than Antonov 225. <laughs> Nowhere was the competition more intense than the race for space. The Soviets were developing their own space shuttle called Buran, which means snowstorm in English. Its design looks similar to America's space shuttle. Soviet engineers had attempted to design something different. But in the end, a straight aerodynamic copy was selected. There are, however, significant differences. Buran has no main engines, so it has more payload capacity and it relies entirely on external rocket boosters to achieve orbit, allowing it four times greater lifting power for cargo. Unlike America's shuttle with main engines and external tank and solid boosters, Buran uses liquid fuel boosters that are throttle controlled and turned on and off to avoid blow-up disasters like the 1986 Challenger tragedy. By the mid-80s, the Soviet shuttle program had fallen behind schedule and they were desperate to keep up with America's program. The Soviets lacked a vehicle large enough to transport Buran. So in 1985, design began on the Antonov 225. It was necessary to create and design a system and vehicle to carry the space shuttle from the manufacturing plants of the Soviet Union, which are located a long distance from the launch pad. The Soviets wanted this big boy built fast and on a tight budget. We had very, very strict requirements to construct this aircraft as quickly as we could and with as little expense. It was all due to the fact that the United States already had their space shuttle and the USSR lagged behind. The pressure was on for the Antonov Design Bureau. So they decided to modernize the Antonov 124, to upgrade it, and use the 124's existing assemblies and parts to create a bigger, more effective jet for the purpose of moving the shuttle. Nicknamed Maria, the Russian word for dream, the Antonov 225 grew from the technology that built its little brother. Looking at the 225, you can see that it has many similarities to the Antonov 124. There is a commonality between the two aircraft. The cross-section is identical to the Antonov 124. The wing panels of the 225 are actually identical to the 124. And the engines are the same as Antonov 124. There are six, though, instead of four.
That's where the comparisons break down. It doesn't take an 